Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number seven of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. How about that animation, uh, Josh? How are you feeling about that? The brand new intro animation for the show. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Alberto Hernandez Morita, who's done all the animating for the channel, did that one. Uh, be sure to check out his Vimeo and Instagram in the description, as well as Moonsauce, who did the amazing uh, sound, the <laughs> theme song for for this uh, this show and the upcoming Slash Tracks uh, review. Yeah, Brandon Brandon Sauce and Anthony Munoz. Moonsauce Productions, I believe, is the name of their uh, their company. So, uh, Josh tonight is celebrating the new opening uh, animation with a big red. Uh, soda that is not in Oregon, and I asked him before we started recording just what in the hell that is, Josh. What is that? It's just, I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments explaining. It's just a drink that's been around forever. Okay. I mean, it's, it's Big Red. It's just Big Red. Maybe I it's a southern assume, thing. Okay, I just assumed it was a generic Dr. Pepper or something, like a safe, like a doctor, like a Mountain Lightning, which is a generic Mountain Dew, or like a Dr. Thunder, which it's, is it's a, a red, generic. It's a red cream soda. The only reason I'm drinking it is because I'm down to four Crystal Pepsis, and uh, and I I stretch them out until June. (laughs) Yeah, you got to save those Crystal Pepsis for, like, the birth of your next child, or, like... Grandchild. Yeah, you and Beth, uh, like, a recommitment ceremony, like, you renew your vows, or something like that. I totally understand, Josh, why you'd want to hold on to those. All I got to do is make it to like June 30th and then they're going to be in stores everywhere. So I'm just stretching these four out until then. So they're special. Yeah. I feel you too. I've been trying to uh, hold out till May 19th for the Mexican pizza. You know, I'm trying to stretch out my nun that I've had for the last like two or three years and it's going pretty well. Uh, you know, I haven't had any in years and I still haven't had any, but I'm telling you May 19th is getting a lot closer, buddy. Go in there and just eat them all. I'm going to get, like, it better be on a cheat day, too. Uh, and I'm going to get extra cheese, light sauce, light beans, uh, and that's it. Maybe a little extra meat. I don't know. I might go crazy. I don't know. Get two of those suckers. Extra large Mexican pizza. Just go for it. Mexican pizza. Oh, man. In the show now. Let's go get in line right now. <laughs> What's the date today? It's the 11th? Yep. You got eight days. Okay. Eight, eight days. more days. I think in the next two or three days, we better get lawn chairs. And just kind of camp out at Taco Bell. We'll meet somewhere. We'll meet somewhere in the Midwest of the United States. Okay. Okay. All right. It's a it's a deal. Uh, Josh, let's get into uh, the first the first uh, segment of the night. Let's get into uh, mean comment and nice comment of the week. Oh, what do you got? What do you got? Which one would you like? Uh, let's do the mean one first. Oh, we okay. did that last time. Nice one first. Nice. All right, let's do nice comment. This is from Mahop Fuduf, uh, another person which I'm assuming is probably from Oregon, just like me. Yeah. Um, nice comment of the week. Best podcast in forever, hands down! Exclamation point. Exclamation point. That drove that, it home. <laughs> he means business. It wasn't all caps either, so he wasn't like yelling the entire <laughs> thing. He yeah. was just like letting us know, like this, ep- you know, this podcast is the best. I saw one that said "Cheers from the UK," and then somebody said "Hello from India." So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. exciting, isn't that exciting? Yeah, that is cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, okay, and then here's mean comment of the week: ninety minutes? Question mark? No thanks, homie. And that is from uh, Elementsu Yildirim. <laughs> I replied to that person and I said, are you talking about the podcast or a 90 minute pig orgasm? Yeah. Or, <laughs> I, I told him, I told, I, I had also replied to him and I said, uh, not 90 minutes, 82 minutes, yeah. uh, sir, 82 minutes of just pure goodness. So yeah, you're thanks wrong. For thanks for dropping in though. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. Thanks for everything. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first three or four minutes of the show. I mean, some people's attention spans just can't handle longer than like four or five minutes. So, TikTok. Yeah. See. So yeah, yeah. TikTok reels. If you if you're not up on TikTok reels on Instagram is like what was popular on TikTok like four or five weeks ago. So you're gonna get a lot of small waist, pretty face with a big bank videos, uh, and then you're gonna get a lot of those videos where people are like 
falling down and they're like dropping a book, a pencil, their cell phone, and then they kind of like levitate back and pick everything up. So you're kind of onto those videos right now. Those are like five or six weeks old. Yield a rim. Okay, that's more your that's more your style. Yield a rim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He probably doesn't even have the attention span for TikTok, man. I don't know. He's got enough attention span to get my attention with his comment. I wonder if it took him longer than 90 minutes to come up with something shitty to say, though, because <laughs> it's like, come on, man. If you're going to you, you did get mean comment of the week, but it was it was not a lot of competition. We got a lot of good comments this week. Yeah, yeah. We, but, we really there wasn't a lot of negative. If for some reason you were joking and talking about the 90 minute pig orgasm, we apologize. <laughs> but you need to be more clear. Uh, well, I think he was being a dick, but <laughs> whatever. Um, let's get into some fun facts, Josh. What do you say? Let's do it. All right. First fun fact of the night. These are coming hot and heavy. The band The Monkees, uh, famous for their TV show The Monkees. Uh, they were kind of like a Beatles knockoff. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed The Monkees. They made a huge comeback in the 80s. Uh, they were put on Nickelodeon. That's where I discovered them. Uh, but back in the sixties, uh, they released a movie called head. Their first movie was called head. Did you know that their first movie was called head? Yeah. Uh, actually when I was seven, my grandma gave me head for Christmas. <laughs> wow. No, uh, well, this never seen the movie. <laughs> okay. This fun fact is kind of like in the style of your joke right there. Uh, the monkeys named their first movie head. So that they, so that if they ever released a sequel to the film, it could be marketed as from the guys who gave you head. Oh, okay. <laughs> the movie was a total box office bomb, though. Um, they were like squeaky clean on TV, and they were like kind of pop pop idol guys. And yeah. uh, in the movie, head was actually like a head trip. Like they were doing drugs, and there was like a bunch of like craziness in the film. So people who liked the monkeys were like, "What the hell is this? This is it's like one big acid trip." Too bad they didn't get a sequel because you know, other than that tagline, you'd be like, "Head to the theaters," you know? <laughs> or yeah, head to. You, if you like head the first time, you're gonna like even more head. <laughs> Let's put so our head heads to, together. Yeah, head to. Let's put our heads together. Uh, okay. Really like world. Every every single one of them was on Boy Meets World at some point. Uh, yeah. they, they performed together in an episode. Didn't one of them play um, Topanga's father? And one, yeah, there was like four different people that played Topanga's parents. Uh, oh my god, I cannot think of her name. She was the mom on Smallville. Uh, her husband is Michael McKean. They're married in real life. They played Topanga's parents in one episode, too. Oh, she w you're talking about the gal who played Beverly Marsh in the It miniseries. Yeah. She's the, she's the one who's married to Michael McKean. Um, I can't think of her name right now, but I can see her in my head right now. Um, so Annette, and, and, O'Toole. Annette O'Toole. Yeah, I was going to say, if you, if you guys know what the name is in the comments, uh, <laughs> give a name. But Josh already came up with it, so... Hey, um, Josh, did you know that sex is banned aboard the International Space Station? No, I did not. I guess they had a bad uh, bad altercation up there. There's no gravity. Somebody blew a load up there, and it was just floating around, yeah, in the space station, just they all over the place. They were watching Head. <laughs> they were trying to, like, figure out how they were going to land their spaceship on the moon, and this guy's, like, looking at the terminal, and he's uh, very intricate you know, uh, thing to land a spaceship on the moon and all of a sudden just a load just hits him right in the side of the face because somebody decided to hump on the spaceship. What a selfish bastard. <laughs> Where's it going to go? They're going to have, if they did, if say if he did blow a load on the spaceship and it was just kind of floating around like Homer on the Simpsons where he's floating around eating potato chips on the, you know, one of the earlier seasons when Homer went to space, they'd have to somehow release the the load out into the vacuum of space, right? And then it would just be floating around in space. So hopefully it hit a black hole, and then it would technically be gone, but, you know. Listen, and then we don't even want to know what we get from that. <laughs> um, it's piggybacking on sex being <laughs> banned aboard the International Space Station, human sperm cells contain about 37.5 megabytes of data each. 
<laughs> yeah, and the average load contains nearly 16 terabytes of data. What? Hell? Yeah. Just it just probably uh, information that like is used to create human beings if it reaches the egg. Oh, gotcha. gotcha. Uh, to create a human being, I'm sure. Um, but man, um, just to think, 16 terabytes. That's a lot of data, yeah. isn't it, Josh? Yeah, my first computer only had four gigabytes. I mean, shit. You should have just plugged in your cock to the tower, <laughs> dude. Put a little fan on your balls and put some uh, and you put a tower around your penis and then like put some neon lights like they used to do in the early two thousands. You can totally mod out your balls, dude. Like storage unlimited. Yeah, storage. you could have like plugged in the networking stuff from the tower just straight into your ass and then like put the wire put the wires somehow into your nuts and like you've got the most powerful tower ever just straight from your the cloud. Yeah, and you spend no money. It's just homemade, dude. That that is a that is listen. We need to stop the podcast right now and we need to create a how-to tutorial on how to somehow harness the terabytes and megabytes from our loads. Our, our, our main comment of the week guy can be our test subject. Yeah, we can put it right in the his uh well <laughs> take, that take 90 minutes, though. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm totally down with this, but if it takes longer than 90 minutes, you're not plugging anything into my balls. It is right there. Um, all right, so check this out. In 2015, a teenager named Bud Weiser was arrested for trespassing at a Budweiser brewery in downtown St. Louis. I think I would have let him go just on principle. Just principle alone. I think so, uh, I would have uh, given him a pass. Bud, are you sure your name's Budweiser? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Here's my ID. Uh, I own the place. <laughs> this is mine. His, his dad comes uh, comes and bells him out. And the cops are like, this Bud's for you. <laughs> no, his dad is actually a Clydesdale horse or a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Bud, why? <laughs> like... Because they're the mascots, you know, for Budweiser. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're saying your mom is a frog and your dad is a Clydesdale. <laughs> okay. Checks out. You're free to go, bud. <laughs> yeah, a frog and a pig have been married for years. So. Yeah. Hey, a man actually. Um, this is I'm a not going to talk anymore about Donald and his wife. Sorry. Oh, God. Here we go. Hey. So, yeah. And if, if you guys saw the new opening cartoon intro for the show, uh, Donald Trump did make... The the intro, so that's great. I, I caught the, that. It's the book that he didn't write, but he says he wrote. It's on there, okay. Um, I was gonna say, um, when you brought up a pig, there was the the guy who received the world's first pig heart. Did you see that he had a pig heart transplant? Yeah, yeah. Okay, he just uh, recently he passed away after like forty days, um, because the the heart actually had like some sort of disease that only pigs can get, right? Can you imagine being the guy who, like, you know, you're not going to die, and we definitely got you a transplant. It's kind of a good news, bad news situation. <laughs> it's not a human heart. It's a pig heart. What's going through your mind when they're they're going to put a pig heart into your chest, man? I'm writing a movie in my head right now where it's a cow heart. Yeah. And then the person gets mad cow disease, which turns into, like, a zombie breakout, you know, a new zombie flick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I've got a pitch to sci-fi that I really want to pitch one day, and it's called the Second Coming, and it takes place in biblical times. And when Jesus comes back, resurrects, yeah. he's actually a zombie, and a zombie outbreak starts because of Jesus. Everybody thinks yeah. oh, he's coming back. No, he's a zombie. It'd be yeah. for the Star channel. Yeah. Um, well, after you're done being damned to hell for all eternity for writing that script, I hope things work out for you in the sci-fi channel. Why don't you take your big big red uh, and bring it down and see if Satan likes it when you're in hell, pal, for pitching that blasphemous idea. There had to be somebody there that when he came out, if, it, if that really happened, uh, you know, oh, my God, dead I mean, body. I, hey, if Jesus did... <laughs> Jesus rose after three days, technically, yes, I guess he is a zombie. By definition... <laughs> He would be a zombie. You're you're right. Um, did you know, Josh? Speaking of rising, uh, Viagra 
can make plants stand up straight, like straight up, for as long as a week beyond their natural lifespan if you put a, a Viagra in their water. If it goes for two weeks, do you have to take the uh, plant to a doctor? <laughs> I, I don't, I have, no. Um, <laughs> and also, I don't know, how does that work? Like, how does that, I'm wondering how that correlates to blood flow in a penis. Does that work because it, like, makes more water and stuff go through the roots of the flower? Uh, I, I, how, how the I hell does that work? Uh, you know, Viagra was like in like became a thing. It was like for heart. They were experimenting on medications for heart problems and shit. Yeah, it opens up your blood vessels. Yeah, like it, it makes your blood flow better. I got one stuck in my throat one time, and I had a stiff neck for like two weeks. So <laughs> I get it, man. Those plants. I, I don't know how. I don't know how. I, I don't get it. Uh, they just. Did they plan it? With, how does it work? What did you read? I don't know. I, that's what I read. That's exactly what I read. It didn't elaborate on, on just straight, bare bones. If you introduce Viagra to a plant, it'll stand up for way longer than its natural you know, ability to stand up, which is like crazy. Like powder? Put it I don't know. Put it, Or just like put it in the soil, I guess. I don't know. I'm just um, picking that, that sunflower from Family Guy. Uh, when she pours all the Red Bull out the window. Official flower business. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, hey, so here, here's our last fun fact of the show. Okay. When the Houston airport kept uh, receiving complaints about the seven-minute wait time for luggage, they acted. They moved the gate to make passengers walk six times longer to get their bags. As a result, complaints decreased to almost zero. Hey, that's the way you do it, right there, man. Yeah. It's it's when you don't give people what they're what they're demanding, they finally get it through their head. They're not hot shit. So <laughs> just make it. Just it's almost like a Jedi mind trick that they pulled. It's like, hey, you're not waiting. You're just it, they did them a two. They did them a two fooled favor here. Uh, they don't feel like they're waiting any longer anymore. And they're also getting more steps. So they're getting closer to that 10,000 steps a day. So the Houston airport, Josh, I think they should receive the Slashaholics uh, Humanitarian Award. Humanitarian Award for episode number seven. Yes. Do we have a consensus? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. (laughs) If any of you guys work for the Houston airport, uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know uh, where we can send you the award. and we'll get that to you as, as soon as possible. Because <laughs> it's a totally real award. It, it yeah, exists. It's, it's right over yeah. here. This is a real thing. Right uh, and the, the award is actually just a, an empty can of Big Red that Josh has been drinking. And he's going to duct tape, you know, first place on the can and send it to you. Josh, <laughs> you want to get into some whore news? Can I, can I throw out a fun fact to you? Yeah, absolutely. I would love it. Okay. For years on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul and a lot of TV shows, they try to keep big things a secret from audiences. Yeah. Um, like they, they throw out little hints. Like in season two of Better Call Saul, if you put the first letters of each episode, like scramble them, it spelt Frings back and Gus Spring came back in season three and fans figured that shit out. But like they kept, they were going to keep this big secret. They flew Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston to the Better Call Saul set, filmed a couple episodes because they're going to they're gonna be in the final season of Better Call Saul. And they it was supposed to be a big secret. And they flew him out in secret, kept him secret. And then the, the creators of the show just decided to tell everybody. They just figured everybody's, somebody's going to figure it out. Uh, <laughs> can you imagine all the hell they went through? And they're like, oh, this is going to be awesome. People find out, you know. <laughs> I, I, I had just, heard... I had heard that um, I saw the tweet that said, guess who's back? And it shows Walter White and Jesse Pinkman, um, which reminded me of like my brother, because my brother's uh, favorite thing to do in life is to spoil movies and TV shows for me. And just anybody that's around when his mouth starts flapping, uh, he if he was a superhero, his name would be the spoiler. Uh, <laughs> he is an evil supervillain whose sole purpose in life is to just create turmoil and agony for anyone who actually enjoys media 
in any format. My brother will watch it even if he wants to or doesn't want to, and he will spoil it for you. Okay? <laughs> Stay away from Aaron Vanover, my brother, the spoiler. He's on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. You just gave away his secret identity on air, man. That's he, not well, cute. hey, he's the spoiler. I just spoiled his secret identity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's get into some spooky news. What do you say? Okay. Horror news. Right. Horror news. <laughs> we changed the name of the segment, Josh. Okay. okay. Because you kept saying your dad joke. Horror news. Horror. That's what it sounded like you were saying. You called it slut news. Ugh. Stop calling it slutty news. All mm. right. We're All getting right. into some spooky news, you big, you big red drinking son of a bitch. Spooky news at the spooky news. All right. <laughs> We're going back to a topic that we addressed in an earlier episode. I don't know if it was episode two or three, but Freddy's Nightmares is now available for free on the streaming network Tubi. So you no longer have to pay for the Amazon Prime, uh, the, I think it's called Screambox. Yeah. So if you guys don't have the extra $5.99 or whatever, because times are tough, times are tough. Instead of paying five ninety nine to see Freddy's Nightmares, you can go to Tubi for free. Uh, if you have a Roku, if you have a Fire Stick, if you have a Roku, whatever, you can get Tubi for free, and you can watch Freddy's Nightmares. I think that's really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, that is cool. There's some. I mean, we make fun of it a lot, but there's some pretty decent episodes. Yeah, I like it. I like it just for the camp value and the nostalgia. Yeah. And just any more, like any chance to see more Freddy Krueger to me is great. Uh, so I'm totally fine with it. My big question, Josh, now that Freddy's Nightmares is back, when are they going to bring back Friday the 13th, the series, on one of these uh, streaming platforms? Man, there was a channel for a while, Chiller, that had everything. They had that show on there, too? Yeah, they had Friday the 13th, the series, on there. So I uh, I really liked Friday the 13th, the series, even though it wasn't related to the films at all. Um, there was an episode written where the mask was going to be the artifact, uh, oh, Jason's man. hockey mask. But it yeah. Meant, yeah. Dude, sign yeah. me up for that. Why don't they just go back and retcon that? Man, go read, go read the fifth book in uh, William Pattison, Eric Morse's Master Evil's uh, Friday the 13th book series, because um, it's a crossover. He ties those books in with the movies, in with Jason Goes to Hell, and in with the TV series and ties it all together. What's the name of the book? The Mask of Jason Voorhees. It's the okay. fifth in the Camp Crystal Lake series. It's on the channel. Uh, it's in two parts. I wasn't aware that Master Evil did anything besides mess with us. So he actually is talented at something. That's that's phenomenal. How hey. great for him. Uh, uh, horror news. I brought this up a couple episodes back. I talked about Dead by Daylight had a new killer coming. And they had a locker power. And I talked about how, like, two years ago, I said it, I posted on their forums and everything, it would be cool if a killer in the game could, like, teleport, travel through lockers around the map, like, go into one locker, come out somewhere else. If a survivor's in it, be able to grab them out. I also said in that same post that a killer should be able to destroy the pallets on the map or sabotage them. Yeah, I remember. There's a new killer coming out in, like, June or July. Exact, those exact powers. Everything that I stated, I've got the post to prove that I said this like two years ago. What? It's like down to a T. Down to a T. Exact same powers. Did my brother work for Dead by Daylight and spoil the the (laughs) reveal for you? And you just had been holding on to this nugget for two years? I'm sure it's a coincidence. It's just because it was just, you know, it's a cool idea. I'm sure plenty of people thought of it. It's just crazy that they, that's actually coming to the game. Yeah, that's the next. But that's don't don't downplay it so much. That's like super interesting and very uh, like you're a detective almost. That's pretty detective Larue. I kind of like that. They do read the forums and stuff, so I mean they've taken ideas from people before. That's phenomenal, man. That's great that you called that, and you actually have it. Uh, we and you actually spoke about it in a previous episode of this. So you're on record on two different platforms saying that exact thing. I remember this. Um. So check this out. Final Destination, uh, Final Destination Six is coming to HBO Max. Have you heard about this? Mm-mm, no. Uh, the tagline is called "Forever is just the beginning," 
And it has an undecided release date at this particular moment. So we don't know when it's going to be released, but I guess it's in pre-production. But how do you feel about the Final Destination series? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like where it's going? Do you like where it's been? I like the books. I've, been re- I've read the original novels. Like, there's only, like, I'm, I'm, I'm down to the last two. Uh, the movies kind of got stale. The only thing that was exciting for me was the last one turning out to be a prequel to the first movie. The spoiler strikes for anybody that hasn't seen that. Five? Fifth, yeah, part five takes place before... Part five ends with the main characters of part five getting on the plane that blows up in the first movie. What? I don't, I've, I've seen it. I, I must not have finished it. it. I must, okay, I must have they, got... They even show the, character, they show the actors from the first movie. like it, they should, like should the, main, the main people from part five are on the plane... When dude stands up and gets everybody off the plane, or yeah, people off the plane, yeah. So I have to check that out. Um, the only th- well, Devin Sawa, man, he's probably excited just to get a paycheck at that <laughs> point. Do they just does he get a residual for that or something? I don't know. We don't even pay him for doing all of our production work for us. So I mean, <laughs> okay, um, that's that's crazy. I did not know that. That's really cool. That makes number five really interesting to me. And as soon as we're done with this episode, I'm going to go to Netflix and check that out. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. It's a cool twist. And if you pay attention, all the phones and stuff, it, it, when they show stuff, it's older. It's not like for the time period that it came out. So there are little hints. Okay. If you paid attention. That's really interesting, man. That's two, that's two dynamite drops by you tonight, Josh. Yeah. All right. Um, the last, uh, spooky story of the, of the episode so Rob Zombie's making the Munsters, okay? Finally. Yeah, he's making the Munsters movie. It's an upcoming film. It's called The Munsters, obviously. And uh, there's some kind of big news. It's, I mean, it's not really big news, but it's kind of neat. I used to watch The Munsters on Nick at Night every night. I, I, and there was only two seasons. I've seen every episode at least like ten times. But Pat Priest, who played uh, the niece, Madeline, mm-hmm. right? She's actually joined the – she's joined the – the cast. She's going to be in the film. Awesome. I mean, that's cool that he's pulling her in. Is she the last surviving actor? No, Butch Patrick is still alive. Eddie. Eddie's still alive. So I actually, I'm sure yeah. Sherry Moon or whatever her name is is going to be the the mom. His, his wife? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's oh, yeah. She's definitely the wife. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Um, but I got a funny story about but- Butch Patrick. I've actually been five feet away from Butch Patrick. I went to the Eugene... Oregon Comic Con, and uh, I met Greg DeHammer Valentine. He's a former professional wrestler. He's a Hall of Famer. He's like former Intercontinental Champion, former Tag Team Champion. At one point, before Hulk Hogan became Hulk Hogan and left Minnesota to go to WWE, Greg Valentine was kind of in the running to possibly take the title from Bob Backlund. But then Hulkamania happened in Minnesota, and that was done. Anyway, so I go... Uh, I was, was going to tell you, Greg Valentine, one of my favorite matches of all time. Roddy Piper. <laughs> Roddy Piper, dog collar match. Yeah, yeah it's brutal. All it's all brutal. You they never see it, watch it. They beat the shit out of each other. Um, So I meet Greg Valentine, right, at the Eugene Comic Con, and I have this really fun, uh, long conversation with Greg. And Butch Patrick from the Munsters, who played Eddie, his table is right next to Greg's. And Greg says to me, he like taps me on the shoulder and he's like, hey, Alex, that's Butch. Pa- that's Butch Patrick over there. He was in the Munsters. He yeah. was on. He was. I used to watch him on TV when I was a kid. And I said, oh, yeah, me too. And he's like, he's like, he's all that fucking guy has nobody at his table right now. He's like <laughs> making fun of Butch Patrick. And Butch Patrick is lit. Could probably hear everything. He's two feet away from us. And uh and you know, my big four slapped on, so he ain't yeah. Get... I know. I was just, I was just like, what the hell is Butch Patrick going to do? Even if he did hear him, Greg Valentine's going to wrap his ass in a figure four. And by the way, Greg Valentine had the largest hand of any man I've ever shook in my life. His hand was gigantic. Where do you think he got the name, the hammer? Yeah, he could hammer nails, dude. If he ever, if he ever wanted to do construction work, he wouldn't even need a tool belt. He could just use, boom, boom, boom. And I met Danny Hodge uh, one time. He's a he was like an old school wrestler back in way back in the day, back when it was still real, you know. And then he he followed him into the what it is now. He's got double leaders in his forearms, and he yeah. can like crush crush things in uh i think we lost him recently i'll have, I'll have to double check but uh anyways yeah like 
him and Greg the Hammer Valentine can do some damage with their with their hands and with their yeah, arms. Greg, I'm telling you, I've met I've met uh, many celebrities, and Greg the Hammer Valentine, super nice guy, got pictures taken, uh, got autographs. He told me a bunch of really neat stories. Uh, it was just. The series, I only spent like twenty five dollars. I think it was like the best twenty five dollars I've ever spent in my life because I got to talk to him for like thirty minutes. It was awesome, totally Sweet. worth it. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say a uh, little correction. I'm correcting myself right now. So I said Madeline for the Munsters. Her name yeah. was Mar- Her name was Marilyn. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just remembered that. I apologized. All slashaholics, don't roast me. Too bad in the comments. All right, Marilyn because she looked like Marilyn Monroe, obviously. Uh, Josh, let's get into. Oh, Flash. you just you just huh? did sport. You just did sports. You talked about Greg Valentine, right? That, that was, was spooky news. Oh, okay. What do you got? All right, let's get. Oh, I see what you're doing. I see you're trying to Jedi mind trick me out of sports. All right, <laughs> Flash so Track Sports. Weird. All right. Well, sports segues into wrestling, Josh. All right, so don't, we got? don't sell yourself short. All right, Minnesota Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins. His career record as a starter, 59 wins, 59 losses, and two ties. His career earnings for an absolute 500 record as a starter, 59, 59, and two. He's made through the year 2021, the season that just ended, $161 million, $699,486. This is why I don't watch sports. He's like... Absolutely average, uh, middle of the road. He's made more money than Michael Jordan ever made in his playing career. The most money Jordan ever made was his last season when he made like $35 million for the one-year contract, which was unheard of at the time. Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player of all time, made like $100 million less than Kirk Cousins, who doesn't even have a winning record in the NFL as a starter. But not inflation. Like, would it be a little bit closer? It's not. It would be a little closer, but it wouldn't be that close because contracts have gotten out of hand because of TV deals. So back, it's completely different. And NFL is super popular. NFL is like NASCAR popular. It's just ridiculous. The TV deals have made the contracts ridiculous. They weren't like that in the 80s and 90s. A lot of the athletes... I mean, we've talked about it previously in the 60s and 70s, you'd, and even the 50s. You'd see athletes that you watched in a game, like, checking you out at, at the grocery store or, or changing your tires and uh, checking your oil at a gas station because they had to have jobs in the offseason. It's totally different now. But yeah, I just I, think that's crazy. It's like a bunch of millionaires. I don't know. I just, I don't, just It seems crazy to me. The, the wealth distribution is crazy. It they is, cr- shiny it rocks is crazy. Us. They found more shiny rocks in the ground than we did, apparently. So. Well, his shiny rocks were in his freaking arm because he can throw a football really well. He didn't have, yeah, his shiny rocks were deposited right in his shoulder. But is it worth $100 million or whatever? I don't think so. I just, don't know. I, I, I always hear the analogy. It's like, oh, yeah, you know, like, even if you're mediocre in the NFL, you're still one of the top 32 quarterbacks in the world. So even if you're like the 30th best quarterback, you're still the 30th best quarterback in the entire world. So it's like, okay, I kind of understand that. And it, the contracts, even though it's ridiculous that teachers, doctors, all these other people that are actually saving the world and, and saving humanity and helping people get paid so little compared to this, it's all relative to how much money that business actually brings in. So it's like, what are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Uh, good, good for Kirk Cousins. I wish I could be the. Thir- I wish I could be mediocre or something and just be absolutely <laughs> rolling. I've got a mediocre ponytail. No, so. you don't. That thing is getting luscious, buddy. You've got a Shawn Michaels mini, uh, Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 12 mini ponytail going on. <laughs> Look at that thing, dude. Uh, you, know, you know the story about his brown tights when he came back in 02? No, no. They, they, he had some really good gear, but the the designer person didn't finish him in time. So they had to do a rush job. They found a, a pair of extra tights. They're just like shit brown tights. And she stitched HBK into them. And so he had to make his return in the elimination chamber, coming back from retirement, winning the world title in shit brown tights because they couldn't finish all the stuff he wanted on his gear in time for the show. You know, you know what's crazy about that? I remember that match, uh, that elimination chamber, and – 
I was really surprised going back because I never watched the Ruthless Aggression era very much. Uh, I, I was surprised, number one, that Shawn Michaels was back, okay? Because he came back for a street fight with Triple H around that same yeah. time, right? Right before that. Yeah. yeah, and he wrestled in denim pants. He yeah. wasn't even in tights. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, yeah, and then he came back, won the Elimination Chamber. And uh, I remember thinking, like, this is crazy. Like, I wasn't Kevin Nash in that Elimination Chamber? Who was in that match? It was, like, Jericho, him, Goldberg. Kane, Goldberg. There was a bunch of big names in that match. Yeah, it's crazy. They, Go yeah. watch it. It's, it's I mean, I, I jumped out of my seat when HBK won. Uh, yeah. Was, uh, it, it was crazy. I, I actually watched it up until about 2009, and then I just couldn't anymore. I love the women's division. I think Natty Neidhart should be in the Hall of Fame before the goddamn Bella Twins, but that's that's a different story for another day. Natty uh, Neidhart got, Neidhart got demoted. She's in NXT right now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. She's not she even should, on the main roster anymore. She, she should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, but uh, So what else we got in sports? All right, second sports story of the night. Actually, the only other sports story before we get into wrestling um, Eagles star wide receiver Devonte Smith, and when I say star, this guy is good. Uh, he was he was uh, recently at a Philadelphia 76ers playoff game last week. They put him on the big jumbotron and they said, "Hey, former former Eagle wide receiver Devonte Smith is in attendance. He's not the former nothing. He's the star. He's under contract. He's the man." Is so, he for how much longer he been well, and how he found out he's getting fired? Smith went on uh, social media after the game and quoted the movie Friday. Uh, he's all, damn, got fired on my day off <laughs> with a smiley face. Uh, he's one. probably not fired. The guy who's in charge of the Jumbotron at the Sixers yeah. game might be fired. Cause, That's funny. That's some good well, shit. You know, at least he turned it into like a funny kind of positive thing because some, some athletes – like, oh, that guy, blah, blah, blah. you know, they could take it to a whole, like, ego level, and he definitely didn't do that. Yeah. Um, Let's get into some wrestling. Let's end can the I, sports section with some wrestling. Can I guess something before you yeah. go? I have, not, I have not seen your notes. Is Cody Rhodes in your wrestling story? Yes, and I don't understand how you would even know that. Exactly, because I've never seen it. It's big. Go ahead. It's not, it's, <clears throat> it's not, I'm, all right. First wrestling story of the night. Cody Rhodes, uh, who previously brought back the old Intercontinental title during his first run with the WWE, had, went on a, po- a podcast recently and stated that he wants to bring back WWE's Winged Eagle Championship belt if okay. he wins the belt. Is that what you're referring to? No, I thought you were going to refer to the fact that the guy that helped start AEW left AEW to go back to WWF. You know, a guy that built this company that could actually be competition. And then just Vince is like, man, go ahead and come on back, buddy. You know? <laughs> I, coming. I, hey, I got into an argument with a guy on Twitter last week over this. Um, he was really upset. Like, he was just a fan, but he was pissed that Cody Rhodes left AEW. He said Cody Rhodes took his ball and went home. And I said, I said, and he said, he said Cody Rhodes is not a main eventer. He'll never be a main eventer, blah, blah, blah. He's he's a big crybaby when he left WWE. He's a crybaby when he left AEW. And I said, listen, Cody Rhodes was stuck with a gimmick of Stardust. He was basically being made a joke of, okay, like a watered-down version of his brother, Goldust. Yeah. He was pissed about the way he was being booked. He finished his contract. He went and started AEW with Tony Khan, okay? He did a great job. He reinvented himself. He became the American Nightmare. He got insanely over. He started main eventing pay-per-views for AEW, became a big name. And then when he became a big name, Vince, the same guy who was burying his ass, offered him a huge contract and brought him back under the same exact gimmick and theme song that he created and got over in AEW. So if you're going to come at me and say something stupid, I'm going to put you in your place because Cody Rhodes is a main eventer. He did exactly what Josh and I said people should do on the last episode when Baker Mayfield was a big baby. He took lemons and turned it into lemonade, and now he's paid in the shade, and he's he's even being rumored that he's going to take the strap off of Roman Reigns. 
And he's also being rumored. He's so over that he's debating if he's going to bring a certain title back. I want that title back. That was my favorite. So do I. Yeah. Let's get back to the story. But yeah, I want that belt back. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and Warrior had it. Remember, he mm-hmm. changed the color. It, took, it was like purple. Yeah, it was like yeah. purple. <laughs> and then Sergeant Slaughter beat him after Macho hit him with a freaking scepter and cracked it right over his head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him. I'm going to get him right now. He said no. He said no. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, second wrestling story and last wrestling story of the evening. Tammy Sitch, WWE Hall of Famer, talked about her in a previous episode about how she was uh, in trouble for the DUI that led to the death of a 75-year-old man. Yeah. She had not actually been arrested uh, until this week. Yeah. Tammy Sitch was officially arrested on Friday at the Hard Rock Hotel in Daytona Beach, Florida, she was charged with DUI, causing death. Uh, causing death. She uh, another felony for driving on a suspended license, crashing uh, or causing serious injury. Four counts of DUI causing injury uh, to multiple people, and the counts of DUI causing damage to property. And this is all according to court records that are you know public knowledge. You can look them up on on the internet. Um. So she was arrested. There's actually footage of her being arrested on YouTube right now. So you can see her in real time being arrested. And she actually throws her boyfriend under the bus. And her boyfriend's the one who bought the car for her when she had a suspended license. And she had charges against her in New Jersey already pending from trying to stab the same boyfriend, I believe. So she's got all... She threw threw an old man under the car and then her boyfriend under the bus. That's... She is... She is the definition of uh, like what like what is a serial killer like aren't narcissistic? She's yeah. like a sociopath. I think she only cares about herself and how she is going to get away with something or what she's going to get. Or it's really sad that someone that talented because if you remember Sonny from the nineties. She knew how to talk on a microphone. She knew how to incite the crowd to cheer for her or boo for her. She was really pretty. She she had she was good. She was a great. They they called her the first diva for a reason. She was really she was great. She managed three tag team champions in a row. She went from like the Body Donnas to um, Phineas and uh, the Godwins, and then she went to the Smoking Guns. She like went boom boom boom, and then the Legion of Doom, I believe, won the tag titles with her too. She she was like managed like four tag team champions in a row. Yeah. Um she threw it all away. She never she sure. never reached those heights again. Um Mark Henry She, she ruined oh, lives. She ruined lives on a podcast, uh told a lot of stories about she ruined some marriages, I'll put it that way. <laughs> along why, the way. Well, why would she she like she has a history of like going on podcasts and interviews and like talking about how she had that affair with Shawn Michaels? Talking about and, all talking about banging like Fifty different wrestlers and shit. It's yeah. like it's not something to brag about. But Sh- showing yeah. pictures of Dolph Ziggler passed out after she slept with him, like showing <laughs> photos of him in the bed passed out after they had said, se- "That's just tacky." Why are yeah. you doing that? What's the matter with you? Um, Mark Henry, uh, WWE Hall of Famer, everybody, the world's strongest man. He's in AEW right now. Uh, and Bill DeMott, who was actually a trainer for WCW at the Power Plant, and he was a wrestler. Bill DeMott was actually one of he Goldberg's. Was, yeah. Bill DeMott was the first person to lose to Bill Goldberg when Bill Goldberg started the streak, you know, his first professional match or whatever. Both of them are calling for the WWE to remove Sonny from the Hall of Fame. Good. Yeah, what, what do you, is that how you feel about it? You want her removed? Yeah, she's ruined a lot of lives. Everything she's done, everything she touches turns to crap. She's got the reverse Midas touch, man. The good die young. All the good ones <clears throat> are, are leaving us, and we're stuck with the shit. So. Isn't, it, isn't it weird? The cockroaches are, are going to be the last ones alive, and she's a cockroach, dude. Just think, how, how, how bad the world could use, like, uh, Robin Williams and Roddy Piper right now. You know, well, but we got Tammy stuck. Stitch. We we're got Sunny. Stitch. So. We got Sunny, dude. She's she's fine. She's got her OnlyFans going. She's making like forty thousand a week with her like broken down, haggard ass body. Like she, the only reason she makes money off that is because like who she who she was. 
it's not because of what she looks like now. It's she's living off of thirty years of past accolades that I don't know, dude. And then also, here's something that really bothers me. She's in the Hall of Fame, okay? China is now in the Hall of Fame, but it was after she died. Yeah. Triple H went on record saying that he wasn't going to put Joni in the Hall of Fame because of her, you know, if a kid Googled China, her history in adult films would pop up. They, Sonny gets into the Hall of Fame and immediately does porn like two or three years later, and she, they kept her in the Hall of Fame. It was like, okay, if that's your answer, then why didn't you remove her when she started doing adult movies? You, like, you can't have it both ways, dude. He, I think he kept China out because it was his ex-girlfriend, and he's married yeah. to Steph. It's the same company and the same guy that brought a legend like Sting in just to bury him and make himself look better, make the company look better. They brought yeah. Sting in. To lose. and it, To lose, just to say WWF beat WCW again. Triple H had to do it. Sting should have beat Triple H. It, there, was no, there was no reason for Triple H to win that. X-Pac should have went out there and like, I don't know which side to get on, DX or NWO. You know, mm-hmm. no one. Um, and I believe they gave him Seth Rollins because they figured Seth would would hurt him. Seth, that's what Seth's. That's the only thing Seth's good at is hurting other wrestlers. So you think that they fed Seth to Sting to hurt him intentionally? Yep. yep. I think I think they knew Seth would not know how to wrestle a vet like that who's like fifty eight at the time or something. And Seth has a history of hurting people, and I think they knew something would go down. They should have never. He, it was a buckle. Turn, turn it buckle. Was, power it, bomb it was a buckle bomb. Yeah, man. it was a buckle bomb. Two of them. Fifty-eight year old man. No, and there, it's, it's never set right with me. I'm glad he's back and he's getting to end his story on his terms. He gave a hell of a speech after an AEW show recently about that. Um, but I digress. Uh, what do we got? Uh, I was going to say one. The last thing on Sting. He. Oh. It, I'm glad that he's back in AEW wrestling because. Uh, it just feels right. He was always part of WCW, and AEW has uh, Tony Schiavone, and they have some other guys fr- from WCW. He was always not like not that he wasn't a national star, but he was like a southern star. Like WCW was based in Georgia. It just feels like it's a better fit, and it, exactly what Sting was afraid of was going to happen in WWE. Like they were going to bury him or not use him correctly was exactly what happened. They just wanted his likeness for the money. Oh, yeah. Market all of his action figures, makeup, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's get into some headlines to end the show. What do you think? Let's do it. All right. Let's do some headlines. So in 2013, a Brazilian woman uh, laced her vagina with poison in an attempt to kill her husband with oral sex. He noticed a strange odor emanating from her private parts and took her to the hospital immediately, where she later confessed her plans. And that is how Alex is still with us today, folks. (laughs) (laughs) That was a hell of a trip, dude. That was a crazy trip to Brazil. I'll tell you what. (laughs) That's crazy. That that really happened. Yeah. Um, Movie. They need to make a movie, though. Oh, they already made one. It's called Teeth, right? Well, they never caught on to her plan until their penis was bit off, Josh. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> teeth available on every free streaming uh, service known to man. Uh, the other day I was watching It Chapter 2, and uh, Bill Denbro's wife, when he, he gets into a fight before he goes back to Derry, Maine, I was like, who the hell is playing his wife? And, I'm, and then I, like, Googled her, and it's like, oh, that's the girl who starred in Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, the only other thing she's ever been in. That's it. Yeah, like it chapter two for seventeen seconds and teeth. Teeth is one of the weirdest, weirdest horror movies ever. It's not even a horror movie. It's a more of like a um, the it's horror. more of like a, it's like a uh, like a warning. It's like a public service warning. Like, don't have sex with someone that isn't your wife because life will bite your dick off. Master Evil is probably going to make us do that one. He already threatened to make us do Evil Bong. So <laughs> Evil uh, Bong. Um, I'll tell you what one we should do uh, that I was trying to tell you about and you didn't know what I was, what I was talking about. There's this John Travolta movie where he plays like a very, like, he's like a simple person. Okay. Uh, he's, he's got like down syndrome or something and he's a big fan of Devin Sawa and Devin Sawa 
which, which all which I can only uh, cipher, you know, decipher. This is his first movie role in like ten years. Uh, he's like a star. He's an action movie star, and John Travolta is a fan of his. This movie is written, produced, and directed by Fred Durst. Yes, Fred Durst, Limp Biscuit, Fred Durst. His way um, Yes. Um, but anyway, I think we should watch that on uh, not Slash Tracks because it's not really a horror movie. It's a thriller. Maybe on Trash Tracks. Okay. But it's like the worst movie I've ever seen in my entire life. It's called like The Fanatic or like – is that what I is that what I called it? The Fanatic? Yeah, I called it The Fanatic. Yeah. yeah, it's like The Fanatic. Um, but it's, it's, it is a, a wild ride of craziness, overacting – Badly written lines. It is beautiful, and we definitely need to watch it on Trash Tracks. Um, so, what's the next headline? All right, Josh. Toilet explodes after freak lightning strikes an Oklahoma City apartment. Firefighters say a bolt of lightning struck a toilet inside an apartment in Oklahoma last week, causing it to explode into dozens of shard pieces, leaving a bl- <laughs> leaving a blackened wreck around the shattered. Uh, duvet or bowl or whatever the Black apartment shard, I, there's a picture and i'll definitely find it and put it on the thumbnail uh the it's just shattered pieces of porcelain all over the place it looks like the ghoulies came out of it it is <laughs> destroyed um the apartment was empty thank god so nobody was you know going to the bathroom at the time when the lightning bolt went straight out of the toilet bowl and exploded uh and but people were they were getting the apartment ready to be moved in till next week. So they did have tenants that were going to move in like this week because this happened last week. Um, you know how on Back to the Future, Doctor Emmett Brown's like the only thing that can get you back to the future is a bolt of lightning. Yeah, <laughs> Marty would have just had to put the flux capacitor in the toilet, man. And if he had rod. been wired, if he had been wired, uh, you know, with everything in his ass plugged into his ass and his ball sack for the gigabytes and everything. It would yeah. have all yeah. worked. He could have generate his asshole could have if the lightning bolt with, with all of his gigabytes and terabytes of information is nuts. He could have powered a dam. Yeah, right. There would have been yeah. enough power to gigawatts. generate power for the city, dude. Infinity gigawatts, right there. Time travel as much as you want. I think what that the, you mean? Josh. I think the city of Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma, in fact, is trying to cover up what actually happened that's my neighbor oklahoma is right next door like i live on the border and i didn't even hear about this story so well dude i think that oklahoma is trying to cover up the fact that somebody had chipotle or taco bell and exploded the toilet with their actual asshole instead of a lightning what, bolt i know what happened they recently proved that donald trump was flushing official documents in the white house down the toilet this yeah. is a true story. Look it up, folks. It's very true, very true. And he was doing this in Oklahoma. His ring fell off. It conducted the lightning, and boom, boom, explosion. With the Stolen amount of election. with the amount of KFC and Diet Pepsi's that Donald Trump consumes, I would not be surprised if a lightning bolt came out of his ass a time or two. Can't no, be healthy really for you. He's documents down the toilet, so maybe you know. I'm surprised the White House wouldn't didn't explode. What I'm is he? Let's look this up. What is Donald Trump, Max Shrek from Batman Returns? Like, he's flushing down all these evil doings. He's shredding them and putting them in the toilet. And then Danny DeVito's down in the sewer, like, taping them together. (laughs) The only thing that fixed Donald Trump was time and tape. Bruce, why are you dressed as Batman? (laughs) Because... I'm going to catch Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm going to position the Batcave directly under Trump's fucking bathroom. And we're going to get all of his paperwork that he's been flushing down the toilet. Um, so here's a, this, this story is actually really funny. It's a short one. Uh, a random Twitter troll went after rapper Drake. Oh, excuse me, not Twitter, Instagram. An Instagram troll went after Drake. So Drake, famous rapper. He was on Degrassi, all the you know, famous guy. Uh, Drake decided that he was going to get his revenge on this troll on Instagram by following the troll's wife on Instagram and then DMing her. (laughs) Oh my God. That is phenomenal. That's good thinking. That's thinking outside the box, right? there. That's That's thinking outside the blown up toilet. Yeah. So good. I think that's, 
phenomenal. What what would you do if you were trolling somebody and that's a superstar and all of a sudden they followed Beth and started DMing her? <laughs> would you be pissed or would you stop trolling people so much? What, what how would you handle that situation, Josh? I don't know. That'd probably get us some good publicity for the channel. Maybe I'll start trolling celebrities and see what. Yeah. Happens. Maybe they can sneak into Nicole's DMs and we can actually like just really blow up, you know. <laughs> that's crazy. I think that's a phenomenal story. Yeah, um, sure. And that story actually is going to lead us into the very last story of the headlines and of the night, man. Right, this is it. Got? This is the end of episode seven, bud. Fei Long from Street Fighter 2. Are you familiar with the character of Fei Long? Oh, yeah. He looks like Bruce Lee. Uh, he's never going to appear in a Street Fighter game ever again. It's the end of Fei Long. I mean, uh, there are 20 different versions of Street Fighter 2, so I think he's covered. Well, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Turbo Alpha, Turbo yeah. Alpha Beta. I mean... <laughs> and Street Fighter 3, 4, 5, he's in all of it. Um, the composer of Street Fighter 5 uh, revealed that Bruce Lee's family is not happy with... Uh, comedic versions of bruce lee okay so they want any version of bruce lee in media removed that's a comedic version the the problem is fei long is not a comedic version okay he's a straightforward uh his fighting style is like ji kun do which is bruce lee's fighting style there's nothing comical about out Fei Long. He is a bad son of a bitch in Street Fighter. He was actually ranked uh, number 10 of like all-time Street Fighter characters. He was recently voted number 10 best character of all time. So there's nothing comedic to him. The only character in any fighting game that I think of when I think of a comedic version of Bruce Lee was Tekken. And there was a character by the name of Law. And he was kind of like a Bruce Lee ripoff. And he, he gets kicked in the balls <laughs> like in the game and reacts to it. So it's like they don't want to see like an image of their like beloved Bruce Lee legend, you know, getting kicked in the balls. Right. Which I understand. But them wanting Fei Long removed tells me one thing, Josh. They've never seen Fei Long. They, yeah, they're, they're late to the party. Yeah, they've never seen him. They don't know. They just probably just assumed that it's a joke and they want it gone. So it's you know, it's ridiculous. It's not comedic. And uh, I think they should look into it because it's it's kind of sad because it's actually a really nice tribute to the, to, to yeah. their father and to their you know their husband or whatever. But anyway, you got anything left for the show, Josh? Uh, if you didn't catch it at the beginning, it's going to be after right here at the end that animation man fans check it out. It's awesome. I'm really happy with it. Uh, I thought it was a great show. I thought we covered a lot of ground. Can't wait to see what everybody has to say. Uh, looking forward to the next meme. And nice comment section. Uh, see what we get. <laughs> hey, if anybody has any uh, memories of any interactions with pro wrestlers, leave them in the comments below. And if any of you guys have uh, met Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster, uh, in real life, tell me about it. Tell us about it. <laughs> uh, leave it in the comments. I pictured Hardy, uh, what's his name, uh, from uh, Trolls Who, uh, whenever in the documentary, when he goes to the horror con, and nobody's coming to the table. <laughs> yes, it was It was exactly like that. Like, you really want my autograph? I was in Troll 2. Yeah, it, it, well, he was at Eugene Comic Con at that time. It was like, here's Greg the Hammer Valentine, Hall of Famer, uh, WWE legend. And then they've got like Power Rangers around him. They've got people that are like big stars, like movie stars and stuff. And then you got Butch Patrick. It's like, hmm. Yeah, a lot of you people. Know, know. Jason David Frank, Green Ranger, or Butch Patrick. I don't know, dude. Who whose table am I going to? Uh Green Ranger all the way. Absolutely. The May the Ooh, power be with you. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching Slash Tracks Action News Episode 7. Be excellent to each other. Good night. Have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo. Mahalo. There you go.